Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the podcast, The Endurance of Labor Laws. I'm your lovely host, Leslie Sullivan. Today is episode 204, and we're going to take a look at what is called the Posey Comitatus Act. My apologies if I mispronounce that. Um it's probably one of those things every once in a while someone might pronounce it as Posey Comitatus Act. But I believe it's pronounced Posey Comitatus Act. It's a very interesting one that I think uh, more people should know about. But before we dive in, let me give a big shout out to my listeners because, as usual, you guys are awesome. We love to see you here, and we greatly appreciate you. Uh, do check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Contact us, comment, whatever the case may be. Let us know how you're doing. So, a big shout out to Oklahoma, California, New York, Virginia, Texas, Pennsylvania. British Columbia, Illinois, Oregon, West Virginia, Georgia, Florida, Indiana, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Ohio, Minnesota, Alabama, Nebraska, Washington, Colorado, District of Columbia, Tennessee, Rhode Island, Kansas, North Carolina, Nevada, Mississippi, Maryland, Michigan, Iowa, Alberta, New Brunswick, Louisiana, Wisconsin, Connecticut, Manitoba, Hawaii, or sorry, Manitoba, Hawaii, New Newfoundland and Labrador, not to be confused with the dog, although it is cute. In terms of countries, the United States, Canada, the Russian Federation, the United Kingdom, Australia, the Netherlands, Slovakia, South Africa, Japan, Denmark and Uzbekistan. So, good to see all of you there. So, we're going to take a look at this lovely act. And this one, I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet as much as possible. um cuz my voice is going in and out from the dry air here in Oklahoma cuz the weather it got cold again we had another cold snap when i woke up this morning it was probably 21 degrees outside because i noticed my heater was on and it was just running and running and running so uh it's like oh the temperature must have dropped because it feels nippy okay so one of the names of this act is called the not amendment Um the long title is an act making appropriations for the support of the army for the fiscal year. Uh another nickname is the Army Appropriations Act of 1878. It was enacted by the 45th Congress of the United States. It became effective June 18th, 1878. And let's see here, and it was signed into law by President Rutherford Hayes on June 18th, 1878. And a little bit of history about him cuz I I did not know that he was one of our presidents. I'm I'm ignorant on so many of the names of our presidents and and that's very unfortunate. <laughs> that's just um uh, my limited education sometimes on the history of the United States. Um but let's see here. Uh President Rutherford Hayes. Um he was an American lawyer and politician who served as the 19th president of the United States from 1877 to 1881. after serving in the US House of Representatives and as governor of Ohio and he was from the Republican Party and his wife's name was Lucy Webb Hayes and he had quite a few children that was very common for back in those days and so what you have to remember is that he was president um either during or right after the reconstructing era of the south so this is after the civil war and so the south they definitely went through a lot um before during and after the civil war and so after the civil war um it was made very clear that the that the south the confederate is part of the united states and we're not going to be the separate states anymore we need to be one nation under god uh, as we were before and so he helped with that and so in regards to this act it is called the posey comitatus act and it is a united states federal law so it's not a state law it's a federal law um let's see here again it was signed uh, into effect june 18th 1878 and um this one limits the powers of the federal government in the use of military or excuse me federal military personnel to enforce domestic policies within the united states let's see here the act originally applied only to the united states army but a subsequent amendment um was made in 1956 uh that expanded to the United States Air Force and then in 1921 and not 1921 excuse me in 2021 the National Defense Authorization Act 
um, for the fiscal year of 2022 further expanded um, this act to cover the United States Navy, Marine Corps and Space Force. Um, the act does not prevent the Army National Guard or the Air National Guard under state authority from acting in a law enforcement capacity within its home state or in a adjacent state if invited by that state's governor. The United States Coast Guard Uh, under the Department of Homeland Security is not covered by the act either primarily because although it is a armed service it also has maritime law enforcement uh, mission so um this is one of those things where this is actually a really good act because it is where the federal government is limiting itself and you know we really do need a federal government that limits itself as opposed to just running amok with our money and our military and so this is what um Congress or the the Senate and the House of Representatives and the President um were trying to do they're trying to limit the powers of the federal government because they they didn't how to describe this they did not want the south to continue to be punished post civil war because there were some problems in the south um with racism um with riots and things of that nature so you had several conflicts that continued to happen for a while in the south um after the civil war um one thing that occurred was the south was greatly punished um for the civil war and so there are people that live there you know I'm not talking about necessarily african americans I'm talking about the uh, whites that live there um they were punished tremendously um during and after the civil war and so there were some people that were very horrible uh to southerners especially from up north and it's like they were continuously being punished for this war that had ended and we were they were trying to bring the nation back together now another thing that was happening was there were riots in the south unfortunately and so you had uh, quite a bit of racism and so you had whites not being very nice to blacks and what you have to remember is that the south back then was predominantly democrat and so also the ku klux klan uh, was founded by democrats um basically white racist democrats so whenever people think about racism in regards to whites a lot of that white supremacy and racism against blacks comes from the democratic party because that's where it originated it was not from republican whites because you have to remember that at this time republican whites um white people um and i don't like using that word whites but it is what it is um they were predominantly up in the northern part of the united states because you know for the civil war it was the north against the south and so for the most part the northern states were republican the southern states were democrat and that's another reason why um it led to a civil war and so another thing you need to remember is that you know when the south lost they didn't just lose a war they lost their way of life and so they're having to start over just brand new but with a whole lot less and with a whole lot more discrimination put upon them So it's one of those things that this act is still in effect today but in a different way because it has been expanded and amended and for the right reasons cuz sometimes the federal government should get involved in things and other times it should not. So another part of this act is that it limits the president of the United States from using the military as like a militia against the citizens of the United States. So that's another reason why this Excuse me, sorry my throat is really dry. I apologize. It's another reason why this act is very important because it does everything it can to protect the American people from any type of fascism or marxism or, or any type of communism because I think what people forget is that you know fascism, marxism and communism was not foreign during this time. It's just, you know, it may not have been common but it was there and so a lot of these laws and acts that are passed especially in federal law especially back during these days 1800s and back it was more to preserve the integrity of the United States and the future of the of the United States and to limit federal government because the last thing that our country wanted especially back then was to continue to um punish the south even though they lost the civil war like when someone loses a war it's bad enough as it is and they had every you know they they should have lost and they did lose for a reason right 
um cuz you know they were fighting over slavery like the south still wanted slavery the north did not and so here's the thing the south their economy was built on slavery that's just how it is that's how it was and the north was like you know we are ending slavery and slaves are coming up to the north so they can be free because we acknowledge that all men are free and all men are equal well you had some very racist democrats in the south during this time that they want to hold on to their way of life i mean who doesn't even if they're completely wrong so you know what what our government was facing um they were facing the fact that the civil war was over the south had been punished actually a little bit before during and after the civil war and so now their representatives and their elected officials are coming to washington like they're supposed to 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 represent their constituents and so um they were having a problem um with the south somewhat still wanting to operate in the way that they were operating but the north and the federal government or i should say some elected officials did not want the south to be continued to punish to be punished and so that's why they did not want the military to just have free reign basically over the south because that's what was going on technically so a little bit of back story when the civil war was over and the south lost um the federal government um our our our, our military specifically the army um they there were different i would say members of the military specifically within the army uh different units were stationed throughout the the south you know after the civil war to help the south have reconstruction so and the reason why they did that was because they were trying to bring the confederate states back into the union they wanted to bring them back into the united states we do not want separate states So the military was stationed there the 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 army excuse me the army was stationed there in the south to help with the reconstruction era of the south but also they wanted to make sure that the United States military specifically the army at this time that they didn't just stay there and bother and intimidate um the southerners and so that's one reason why they had that So it's one of those things that you know you want to make sure that your military is for your people, not against your people, especially people that have previously left the United States but now they're coming back into the fold. So that's another reason why this act was passed was to try and help unify the United States even more because you have to remember it had been ripped apart for a while because you know the, the Civil War did not happen just overnight. Um, it took a while to brew. Um, and then the civil war happened there was tremendous loss of life um you know here's another thing that people don't realize about what happened in the south you know the south um they they lost everything not just a war you know they lost everything a lot of them lost their property they lost their livestock they lost their land they basically lost um direct and immediate access to food water and shelter cuz a lot of you know what people don't know and you know probably this isn't being taught in schools hardly at all is that there was massive starvation in the ha- I'm sorry in the in the south during the civil war and after the civil war and so you know when i say that the south lost everything i mean that literally like they lost their way of life they lost their economy um they lost so much and the movie gone with the wind is a very accurate i would say description and and interpretation from a historical point of view um even with or without the romance involved it's very accurate in regards to what was going on in the south and in the north how the war how the civil war was viewed by yankees and how the war was viewed by confederates and then how the south had to slowly recover from such a tremendous war cuz not only did they have to recover from battle fatigue and loss of property and loss of life they had to try and recover some sense of economy and some some sense of earning a living like just imagine if if you come home from war and you no longer have a house or a property because you went off to fight you know for what you believed in at the time and then you come back and you don't have a home anymore because you were you were off fighting in battles and what not and because you didn't pay your property tax or you didn't pay your taxes to the federal or state government 
especially you know to the IRS or whatever you or to the federal government you lost your property because of that so a lot of people that lived in the south lost their property uh number 1 because it was completely destroyed or damaged by the civil war number 2 because they could not find the legal documents to prove that they actually owned the land that is theirs the exact same thing happened um after world war 2 when the war was over and um specifically Jews were going home to their houses and they find squatters there and then so many Jews lost their homes and their businesses to people that did not even own them or buy them they just squatted on them and took them over and because a lot of Jewish people no longer had access to their legal documents hardly any of them got their property back hardly any any of them got their places of business back hardly any of them uh, got their bank account or their money's back Like just imagine how stressful and how horrible that is and how that would be. So that is exactly what happened to the south. So this is one reason why um it was a bipartisan bill actually. Um it was presented by a Democrat and a Republican. Um this one this act that we're talking about. And so the the legislature and the powers that be at the time, they recognized that you know, the south has suffered enough and we need to make sure that they are coming back into the fold and so this act was to help with that and to try and limit any type of government conflict with the military in regards to the people now another thing that this act does it also um there are times that they enhance it with different amendments and they make it so that um the military can help out um uh, with local law enforcement in regards to like if there's a terrorist attack or or if there is a natural disaster or things of that nature um it's just that sometimes they have a conflict with who actually has jurisdiction because you know let's say for example there you know hurricane katrina or something right um so obviously the federal government sends in troops and support and things like that but the people who actually have jurisdiction is local law enforcement which would be your your police officers and anyone that the governor uh basically has jurisdiction over. And so um it's one of those things that yes you can have additional support and help from the military, but in terms of arrest or search and seizures or warrants or arrest or that kind of thing, that comes down to local law enforcement because that applies to the courts of the state not of the federal government. So just because the military's called in that doesn't mean that they have jurisdiction for search, seizure and arrest. So that's one reason why acts like this are very important because it limits federal government especially the military and what they can do in their military sense because I I you know the last thing you want is you the last thing you want is having the military and the local police intimidating everyday average people right like how horrible would it be to have the police search seize and arrest you but then also the military comes in and does the exact same thing so it's one of those things you can't have dual jurisdiction like that so you know with this act it basically says you know you can have the military come in and help and and in particularly with this act it it applied to the army because the other branches of the military were not added or included until several you know several decades later or whatever but it's one of those things that yes you can have the military come in and just be that extra support to local law enforcement but whenever the military is called in to help with local law enforcement issues they do not have jurisdiction for search, seizures and or arrest. That is strictly within the jurisdiction of local law enforcement because it it originates from the state. And the reason why that is is because it depends on the type of crime that is committed if a crime has been committed. So, you know, there's a difference between going to the state penitentiary and the federal pen, right? Well, the difference is the type of crime that was committed and then you have different judges whether state judges or federal judges that that determine your sentence not whether or not you're guilty or innocent typically that's by a jury unless you opt for a judge to decide 
you know, whether or not you're guilty or innocent, uh, innocent or whatever, or whatever the case may be. Um, but it comes down to what is the jurisdiction, because you do not want dual jurisdiction. Like you don't want to have to deal with the military and local police at the same time, because that's like, okay, who actually has authorization to do a search, seizures and warrants. You know what I mean? Like you have to be careful about these things. So this is why it's very important to limit federal government. Because you know, whenever I see that federal government is being limited, that tells me that's actually really smart. Because whenever I see federal government that is not limited, it's typically it's typically getting too big for its britches and it's just running amok and it's not being very kind to citizens. And it's harassing them and it's overtaxing them. So I prefer a limited government for sure, a limited federal government and state government, but especially federal government, because, you know, if you don't limit your federal government, you run the risk of things going really bad really quick in regards to communism, fascism and socialism. I mean, socialism is not as bad as Marxism or communism or fascism, but it's just a, you know, a. A cousin to it, like a little cousin to one of them. It's still a problem. It's still an issue. Like if you look at some of the things that go on in Great Britain and also Canada, they have socialism. And it, it, it's like the socialists just are completely oblivious to the suffering of their people. Like they're so obsessed with political agendas that they're not taking into consideration that people are having a hard time um, just with everyday living, unfortunately. And I, I don't like to see that. But that is, but that is exactly what is happening in these socialistic um, countries, and you would think they they wouldn't want bad things for their people, but sometimes people are so obsessed um, with power that they don't care how bad it gets for their own people. So that's why it's important to limit your federal government, and that is exactly what this act did. Um, I will close out this podcast with uh, recommending some videos for you because I think that's important to to look at different things. So um, there's a really good video by Charles Caps. It's called "The Cure for Doubt and Unbelief." It is really good. Like if you are on the fence about faith and and belief, and or maybe you've gone through a lot in your life, you need to watch that video. It's on YouTube. It's like from the 70s or 80s. Just looking at the the hairstyles and um, the suit styles, but it's still very relevant because God's word is timeless, and I think that. You know, regardless of what we go through in our life, God is good and true, and to me, that's very refreshing. And I think more people, more people need hope now more than ever. And I really, I really like what Kenneth Copeland says. Um, he he said that tough times don't last, but tough people do. And I think we need to hold on to that, especially when things get tough in our economy and within our country. But just know that it's not over till God says it's over. And even then, he makes exceptions to the rule all the time because he loves his people. Another thing I would take a look at is from um, the Caps Ministry, C A P P S, Charles Caps Ministry. These are declarations that I think are great to say over your life every day, just speaking words of faith into your life, and just helping you with your life journey. So I love these declarations. It's called uh, God's Prescription, and it says repeat these confessions three times a day. No harmful side effects. I think that's wonderful. And these are just wonderful confessions about your life and about your body and things of that nature. And I think it's wonderful because you know what we speak, especially about ourselves and our situations, typically comes to pass. So I'll read one of these confessions for you because it's really good. It's one of my favorites. And you can download this online or you can print it off. And if you don't have a printer, you can still hit Control P. And do print, but then just instead of printing, do save as PDF, and you can save that to your laptop, your phone, or you can email it to yourself. That's a really good thing to do.、Um, but the first confession is really awesome. It says, "My immune system functions perfectly in the way God created it to function. It is fully developed and balanced. Wisdom is imparted to my immune system today to reject all pathogens and accept all that is good." And that's from Amos five fourteen and fifteen and Deuteronomy thirty fifteen and nineteen. Deuteronomy is a really good book. Check that one out in the Holy Bible, because God's word is timeless and it is always true. The next declaration is I am I am immune to sickness and disease. I recognize and accept that which is good. 
I am able to stand in the presence of sickness and infirmity without fear or sense of inferiority. God fights my battles for me as I rest in safety, for he is my fortress. No evil will come upon me, nor any plague near my dwelling. And that is from Psalm 91, verse 10. Do check out Psalm 91. It is a great psalm. It's, it's awesome. You need to have that one like on your mirror in your bathroom. It's good. Um, this next one's really good too. It says, I am the body of Christ and Satan hath no power over me for I overcome evil with good. And that's from 1 Corinthians 12, 27 and Romans 12, 21. And let's see, there's another one that says, Jesus is the Lord of my life. Sickness and disease have no power over me. I am forgiven and free from sin and guilt. I am dead to sin and alive unto righteousness. And that's from Colossians 1, 21 and 22 and 1 Peter 2, 24. Another one says, I am of God and have overcome him, Satan. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's from 1 John 4, 4. The next one, oh, I love this one. I am free from unforgiveness and strife. I forgive others as Christ has forgiven me, for the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. And that's from Matthew 6, 12 and Romans 5, 5. The reason why I really love that one is because it's so easy to get caught up in strife and unforgiveness when tough things happen in your life. Like, for example, if ever you've um, you had a job loss or you had a really tough situation in your life, It's easy to get bitter, so easy. And, you know, none of us are called to bitterness, so we need to make sure that we are not bitter in any way, shape, or form. It goes on to say, another confession, this one's really good. Jesus bore my sins and his body on the tree. Therefore, I am dead to sin and alive unto God, and by his stripes I am healed and made whole. I love that. That's from 1 Peter 2, 24, Romans 6, 11, and 2 Corinthians 5, 21. This one, this, these uh, next three are awesome. These are uh, confessions regarding um, having creative power for finances. So if you need help with money or getting a job or being blessed or uh, being prosperous, these are great. These are for you. It says, I delight myself in the Lord and he gives me the desires of my heart. That includes money. So, you know, you know, money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. So if you don't love money, you're fine. Because here's the thing. As long as you love God, he'll give you what you need. But the moment you start loving the things that you're not supposed to love, that's when you're going to have problems because you are inviting sin and other things into your life that are not holy. Um, the next really good confession is, The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. And that's from Malachi 3.10 and 11 and Isaiah 54.17. The last one is my mind is renewed by the word of God. Therefore, I forbid thoughts of failure and defeat to inhabit my mind. That is from Ephesians 4.23. I love that one because it's so easy to get negative. It is so easy. Like, for example, like I will want something to happen And I don't see it come to pass right away or maybe it doesn't work out the way that I want it. Guess what? God has us in the palm of his hand. He truly does. And it's one of those things that whatever you confess is what you are saying is going to come to pass. So if you want something to come to pass, make sure it's something good. So sometimes we are our own worst enemy because the battlefield is in the mind. That's where the battlefield is, and that's where the enemy loves to convince us that things are bad, things are over, things are never going to get better. Don't believe those lies. Believe in what God says about you and your situation, which is why I strongly encourage people to get a Bible, a good Bible. Um, I'm reading a really good one right now in terms of versions of it. I'm reading the Amplified Bible. It's a really good translation. Um, I'm not a fan of the kind of vague, wishy-washy ones. This one's not like that. It's good. It's precise, uh, precise, excuse me, and very thorough. And I think that's a really good way to read God's holy word. So, you know, it is important to read God's holy word every day, even if it's just one verse. And I just think that's a wonderful thing to do because it reminds you that God is in control. God is in control. He will take care of you no matter what. And so that's why it's very important to... You know, speak these good, wonderful things over your life every day because, you know, even though we do go over some serious things on this podcast and things of that nature, and, you know, I'm just like anybody else. I get, I get frustrated just like anybody else. But, 
It's one of those things that I don't allow myself to live in frustration. I don't, you know, pitch a tent uh basically in the valley of death like i walk through the valley of death like i don't pitch a tent there and, and claim that you know it's it's what the church wants or something which technically would be what the catholic church would want you to do because they want you to focus on sin and sorrow and that's not what god wants for us at all but it's one of those things that you know if we only focus on the negative and never the positive then we're going to have a really difficult life so i think it's important that you know not to necessarily ignore the bad things but you know take everything to god first You know, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but one of the reasons why I started this podcast was because I felt that God called me to start this podcast. Like this wasn't something that I thought of on my own. I wasn't even thinking about doing a podcast. I I I knew that I wanted to do something really good and valuable with my time and do something that I enjoy, but it never dawned on me to do a podcast. So I know that God dropped that in my heart because you know, I'm not your typical podcaster or youtuber like I'm not a celebrity at least not yet who knows maybe god will make me one I don't know um but it's one of those things like I'm not a movie star at least not yet and so it's one of those things that when god calls you to do something that you know was not really on your mind and it was not really what you thought you would ever do you know to me that shows the loving kindness of our heavenly father and that he knows and cares what is good for us So that's why it's very important to read his holy word, meditate on it, and also speak positive confessions over your life and over your spouse and your children and over any and all of your situations or circumstances. I think that's very important because, you know, it's easy to speak negative things. It, you know, speaking negatively will actually hinder your life, not make it better. So, let's move forward and for things to be better and do check out um these different resources because they are free like these declarations and you know, you know what's awesome about YouTube? I never thought that YouTube could be used as a a avenue um or a or a weapon for good. You know, I never thought that there would be so many positive things on YouTube especially to renew your faith and to encourage you to walk by faith not by sight. I just think that's a wonderful thing. because I remember, you know, never watching YouTube ever. Like I just didn't have time for it. I didn't care for it. And then over over the years, I watched more and more things on YouTube and now I watch more and more positive things on YouTube because I think it's easy to find the negative. So, you know, let's turn over a new leaf and follow what we're supposed to follow and do what we are supposed to do. And, you know, when I say follow, I mean follow Jesus Christ. Like, you know, That may sound religious, I'm not trying to be religious not by any means, but it's one of those things like I look at it this way. If God be for me, who dare be against me? I literally think that way. And here's the thing, God has to be first in order for our life to be blessed because if you think you're going to be blessed by living some other kind of funky lifestyle that's not holy, you're in for a rude awakening on that. You know, just because we have free will to do what we want, whatever we want, whenever we want, that doesn't mean it's healthy for us. So one thing I do tell people is I tell them, "Hey, you know, we need to pray about this first." And it always shocks people, especially if they're not really into prayer or maybe they don't pray publicly, and I don't mean like make a scene or anything. I just mean like, you know, like before I start a business meeting, you know, I typically say, "Hey, can we pray first?" because that tells me, you know, what are they comfortable with? And you know, that tells me their level of faith. Like I love it when someone when someone says, "Hey, let's, you know, can we pray first about this?" And then also you learn a lot about how they pray. Do they believe in the goodness of God or or are they just lifting up these wimpy, whiny negative prayers? Like, "Oh Lord, if it be your will." Guess what? It is God's will for things to be good for you. So stop doubting. You know, the word if I wish was banned in the English language because it creates doubt. It doesn't help people have faith and integrity. In in fact, it discourages people. So You know, we need to stop doubting and we need to start believing. So, FYI, please be aware of those things. Do check out those resources. They're free in the YouTube channel. Um I think they will bless you all the days of your life. But I will go ahead and end this podcast as usual. Um I pray that you're happy, healthy and whole, that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you so much. God bless and bye-bye.